This is how you do a dramatic grunge black and white conversion in Photoshop. All right, so before we get started, let me just say that while any picture will work for this effect, photos that have some sort of grunge or grit on them already will look the best in the end. So like this truck has all this, all these defects on the outside of it, that'll help make this image look a lot better than an image that's like super clean. Okay, so obviously the first thing we're gonna do is change our photo to black and white. To do that, we're gonna click on this little half circle thing and select gradient map. In this case, we're gonna switch method to classic. Then we're just gonna click on this gradient thing here, which brings up the gradient editor. We're gonna go into basics and we're gonna select this first one right here. That'll put black here and white here. If it doesn't, click on this box, click here, go to black, click OK, then click here, click here, go to white, and click OK. That's all we really have to do in here. You can manipulate these if you want to adjust how your image looks. The closer these are in together, like this will brighten your brights, this will darken your darks, and this deals with your midtones. So you can play around in there if you want. I'm just going to put mine back to the outside and to 50% right back in the middle, and then I'm going to click OK. Next, we're gonna click back on our background image, then go down to the little half circle thing and put on a black and white adjustment layer this time. And to start, we're gonna click up here on auto. So that'll readjust these little sliders. And basically all these do is, and try and remember the starting number before you slide anything. So this one's 23 for reds. As you slide them, it'll adjust the, uh, you know, the color that goes with that within the original image. So if I hold alt and click, his face was, has a little bit of red in it and some pieces on the truck. So as I slide red, it's gonna adjust the darkness and lightness of everything that was red in the original image. I don't actually think that we need to, for this one, do much. So you can play around in here if you want. Just make sure you don't go too far because you can see the image like can start to fall apart or whatever. So just be careful with how far you go. I'm just gonna leave all of mine on auto. And at this point, we're already ready to combine everything that we've done so far into one kind of image layer. So click on your very top layer and then go Control, Shift, Alt, and hit E. That'll put the image all together on one layer right here. Then right click and convert it to a smart object. Then go up to Filter and go into Camera Raw Filter. Now in here, we're gonna be dealing with everything in basic, so drop that down. And the key things are to bump your shadows. So I'm gonna bump that quite a ways up. So kind of, I don't wanna go too crazy in there. I'm kind of looking at this part. So I don't wanna go all the way. I'm gonna keep a little bit of darkness in there, maybe something like that. Then you're gonna go to clarity, bump that quite high. So I'm gonna go to like 80 on clarity. Texture, same thing. You wanna bump your texture quite a bit. So go to whatever level you're comfortable with. Then I go to dehaze and I use that to kind of darken some of it back and add some of that contrast back in. Then I go back up here and start messing with other things. So for instance, I will usually drop highlights down. I'll drop whites down. Then I'll bump the contrast a little bit more, maybe bump the blacks a little bit more. And then in this case, I'm going to drop the exposure just a little bit as well. So mess around in here until you get the look that you want. When you're good, then just click OK and it'll update on your image over here. So that was before Camera Raw Filter and this is after. And just so you know, if your image isn't looking so grungy just yet, like maybe this one here, which I've done all the same steps to, you can go back in to Camera Raw Filter. So make sure you're selected still on your image layer. Go to Filter, go to Camera Raw Filter and you can add a second one on. Now. Just be careful if you add a second one, you're still gonna wanna go in and crank the clarity. That's kind of the point of being able to add even more, but you probably don't wanna add more texture. Usually that doesn't work as well. You probably wanna peel some of the texture back if you add a second one on, then just play around with everything else again until you get the look that you want and then click okay. And as you can see, that second camera raw filter can really take an image that wasn't looking so grungy just yet to looking really grungy really quick. So for my image, the next thing I'm gonna do is I want the boy to stand out a little bit more. I wanna kinda of darken this, the brightness of the truck around here. So I'm gonna to go to the little half circle thing again, click on it, and I'm gonna put a curves on, 
and then I'm just going to click in here in the middle and drag down until I get the, the truck looking the way that I want. So I'm not really paying attention to anything in here right now. I'm just dealing with the truck. So I think that looks pretty good for what I want. And then I'm going to click on the mask right here. So on the white, I'm going to go over to a brush. I'm going to make sure it's a black brush. So if you don't see black, click on it and just slide it to black. Click OK. Go up to your size up here. For me, I'm going to make it pretty big because I'm just kind of going to paint in this whole area here that I don't want affected by this curves adjustment. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, maybe about a thousand, something like that. And I'm going to make sure my hardness is way down. In this case, I'm going to keep my opacity and my flow both at 100. And then I'm just going to paint in this area. So I have it really blurry, like I have this the hardness way down, so it don't have to be super accurate right around the edges of this window. If you don't have a window, you're just may maybe painting around your like main subject here. So I'm going to paint this in like that, paint the stuff that you don't want affected by the adjustment. You can see I painted all of this in black, so everything in white is being affected by curves, everything in black is not. So now when I click this, it's only the truck, the side of the truck that's being affected. But if you don't want it to be this dramatic, then you can also change the density. And by dropping the density, it's now going to put some of that. See, it went to dark gray now. So now some of that curves, like a little bit, is going to be affecting that stuff that I painted in the window. So if I slide this all the way down, you can see that now the curves, like that black blotch is a really light gray. So it's almost white, so it's really impacting the boy here. So I'm going to go to like 75%, somewhere around there. So now when I click it, the boy is being affected a little bit, and the truck's being affected completely. And if I want, I can still go back in and darken it even more to create more of an effect, which I think I like a little bit better. Also, if you notice anything like this in your image, like this banding stuff, then just go back into Camera Raw Filter and mess around with some of your settings. So for me, since that's in this kind of bright part of the sky, I'm just going to boost my highlights a little bit. And I think that'll wash that out pretty good. Maybe some of my whites, I'm going to click OK and see if that did anything. Yeah, so that kind of fixed up some of it. I might have to do some more over here, but play around in Camera Raw Filter to see if you can fix some of that. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is just add some grain or noise onto our image. So to do that, we're going to go Control Shift N for a new layer. I'm going to change mode to overlay and then click this fill overlay neutral color 50% gray. Name it. I'm going to name this just noise. Click OK. That's going to put a, this kind of gray layer at the very top here. Then all we have to do is go up to filter down to blur gallery. Pick any of these things. I'm going to pick field blur. Ignore everything up here and just go down to where it says effects, motion effects, click on noise, and you can see the grain is right there. And then just choose the amount and size, whatever that you want. So for mine, since it's very grungy, I'm going to make this, you know, fairly high and bump the size up a little bit. Maybe I'll might just bump that up a little bit more. When you're good, click OK, and it's going to update on your image here. So that was before noise, this is after. But you can also, if you want, to the right over here, you can double click. That's going to bring up your layer style menu. And then you can just go to it right here where it says blend if gray underlying layer. Drag this one right here all the way over, like quite a bit, so you can, until you see the grain kind of disappearing. Then let go, hold Alt or Option, click on the right side of this, split it and that'll help transition it to be a little bit smoother. So go as far as you want. I'm not going to go all the way this time. I'm going to go to maybe about right there. And that helps just blend some of the noise. I'm going to click OK. That helps blend some of the noise in away from like the bright areas and keeps it in the dark. So now when I click this, it's not as much on the boy's face, but it'll show up in the dark areas. Even though my image already had a whole bunch of noise in it, this is a good just final touch to add a little bit more grunge to it. And there you go, we're done. But if you want to learn how to do other creative black and white conversions, make sure to watch one of the videos on the screen right now.